Welcome to Salty Investors, episode number 52. It is Friday the 13th of October, 2023. Um, You got any, you know, you're trick-or-treating tonight, Tim? What's going on? No, I've been making some Alco Pops, but um, yeah, don't know if I should be handing them out to kids, but yeah, they're going to go. (laughs) (laughs) What do you do for Halloween? Anything or? Halloween? uh, When is that? It's actually the end of the month, isn't it? Um, I don't do anything. No, I haven't done anything for years. When I when I used to work at a university, we used to have a Halloween party thing, and everybody would dress up. But yeah, I haven't done anything like that for a long time. Yeah. Yep. Too yeah. American for me. So yeah, I'd, I don't yeah, know why we're taking little... that on. Yeah. No. no. Well, if, if Americans are good at one thing, it's exporting their bullshit overseas, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, Let's uh, let's get to the salt of the week. I'll kick it off. Um, this isn't new. Uh, the proposal by Jim Chalmers to raise the tax concession on super balances over $3 million from 15% to 30% is in the news again. Um, now, this would affect around 50,000 super account holders or about 0.5% of Australians. Now, I guess it's worth mentioning why there's a concession in the first place. It's to encourage people to save for their retirement so they won't be dependent on the state. The problem is the people who are most likely to benefit from the concession are the same people with super balances over 3 million that don't need that incentive in the first place. And the people who could benefit from such a concession don't have the excess income to take advantage of. Which for me, is just another argument in favour of scrapping the compulsory nature of superannuation. What do you think, Tim? Oh, they're just, they're looking for everywhere for money. It's just, you know, never yeah. ending this thing. Um, yeah. I don't know. Even if they do do it 30%, people just put in less, you know, and, you know, they mm. just won't, won't contribute it anymore. So, but I see a lot of, you know, retirees have actually got millions in there, you know, some of them $10 million yeah. in there and stuff, you know, it's getting a bit yeah. ridiculous. It's hardly for retirement. It's obviously, you know, family planning and all this is going into this now. That's, not yeah, really a superannuation yeah. scheme and yeah i don't know it's just seems to be a bit of a rot but i don't know but I mean, gotta... the, the, the thing is if, if you you want to get people off the pension which is the aim right you'd save for your own retirement so that's not such a burden on the state but it's the people in low incomes that are the ones you want to encourage to get off that but they're the ones who can't take advantage of these things so it, it the incentive structure is all wrong really isn't it mm. i mean uh, yeah, it's just all backwards. And we end up spending, we still spend quite a bit of money on the age pension. I mean, it's not oh, like yeah. we've, we've done away with it. I mean, it's still a huge amount of money. Uh, yeah. Anyway. It's very nice in Australia as well, the age pension. It's actually very generous. Uh, like mm. from the Howard years, they've, you know, popped it up a little bit more. And yeah, it's actually not a bad income. Um, but yeah, can we afford as an aging population? You know, I don't know. Um yeah. Still going to have it around for for decades and decades, and uh, and then you know we keep keep allowing people to dip into it, you know, <laughs> and, and even people yeah. with low income things have hardly yeah. got any super anyway. So I don't know. And the thing about the thing about letting people dip in to say get a deposit for a house, I mean, that's not really the problem, is it? I mean, the problem is we've got a lack of supply of housing. I mean, all you're going to do is drive house prices up even further and make it more unaffordable for everybody else because, oh, now everybody's got can tap their super for 50 grand or something. What's going to happen? House prices are just going to go up. Uh, it doesn't really solve the problem, does it? But anyway, what's your solve for this week? Well, a little bit controversial, but um, the Jews are getting a bit of a hard, rough time of it lately. Um, mm-hmm. t- terrible violence has been justified by some, and but I think it's only going to make their situation worse. If you want to be successful, I reckon stop funding destructive tasks. Imagine instead of bombing buildings, you're building schools and encouraging entrepreneurs. Bring a little capitalism and free markets into your heart instead of hate, envy and resentment, and your society will, pre- will improve, just as mm. it's done for billions of others. Well, I'm just, mm. I know that's a bit controversial, but, you know, it just doesn't Shouldn't seem be. like an endless cycle <laughs> of, you know, hate and envy and greed and... Well, and that's the thing. I mean, and, and the, the people that are saying, well, on the one hand, on the other hand, there's no moral equivalence here. There is one side of this battle that uses children as human shields. And there's another side of the battle that refrains from shooting 
or targeting those places precisely for that reason. And that that's that there's a moral difference there. Yeah. And the moral difference is that, the, that Israel is, <clears throat> you know, um, they are supporters of democracy. They are supporters of capitalism. That's why they're the only, they're the beacon of morality in that whole region. Yeah. Um, and like you say, if the others turn their attention towards building their own economies and communities up in the same way, you'd probably have less of this tension. Yeah, yeah. Like we don't think about Singapore and go, oh, yeah, like, you know, it's a terrible country. You know, we should, they've only got a couple of million people as well. Um, mm. But yeah, they're adding to society, adding to the world. You know, there's all relationships we've got with Singapore. Um, yep. If Gaza and Hezbollah did the same thing, you know, We'd be like, oh, well, you know, I'm going to look after these guys as well. But, you know, we're, we're, the only people we work with are the Jews, you know. So and they're the only ones that are like, you know, providing to the world and, you know, doing stuff. So I don't know. I just, I just hope they can get out of the cycle of, you know, oh, these people over the fence, I don't like them. And, you know, I feel like I've been wronged. Well, I understand. You know, I've got a bit of compassion for them. It's just, yeah. that's just not going to help you long term. You know, you well, I, I just don't know. I just don't know how you resolve something that's fundamentally about religion. Because if this were just a territorial dispute over land, had nothing to do with religion, I think it would have been solved decades ago, right? But mm. this is a like a civil civilizational battle, you know, to the end. Um, yeah, I, I just don't know. You know, all over, you know, pretend gods that don't exist, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought I said something controversial. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. It's just, it's just desert. A lot of it, you know. I know. Just, just, you know, a bit heartbreaking. And then the rest of the world gets dragged into this, obviously. And yeah, you know. but, but, you know, the other part of this is that you have people openly saying things in front of the Sydney Opera House, like "gash the Jews," and you have the left in Australia that, in most of the Western world, is running around yelling "fascist" at everybody, and that they can't actually label fascists who are literally standing in front of the Sydney Opera House yelling gas the Jews and they can't even call bring themselves to call those people fascists you know yeah Ugh. it's a stunning it's a stunning uh, you know yeah I'm seeing state the of stop moral war, gymnastics all the stop war signs are coming out and like a couple of months mm. ago you guys were all for Ukraine and you know let's bomb <laughs> I just hypocrisy just drives me insane. I just can't handle it, you know, but I suppose that's where we live in, but yeah. Yep. Yep. Anyway, let's move on to, well, I don't know if it's that much more positive. Um, let's have a look at uh, <laughs> just some interesting charts this week. Um, yeah. Uh, this is not news that a lot of the Russell 2000 don't make any money, um, but you, you see that the, the peaks in that tend to coincide with basically end of cycles, right? Mm -hmm. When when the Russell two thousand, the percentage of Russell two thousand stocks, the non earners reaches a peak, <clears throat> uh, that's when you've hit a peak in the cycle. It's pretty clear there ninety two thousand two thousand and nine. Um, so this one looks pretty prolonged. It's sort of have a look at it. It's not it's not just a straight up straight down. <laughs> it is more like I still think. I still think the if we're going to do historical analogs, which is always dangerous with financial yeah. markets, probably 2000 is the one you look at. That took quite a long time to unwind. Um, this one looks like it's kind of the same. But, hey, you know, if they turn the printer back on, we off we go yeah. again. That's right. Yeah, I don't know. Um, never ending that yeah. stuff, is it? Just, <laughs> how many of these charts have we seen over <laughs> the last yeah, six yeah. months? <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, well, I mean, look at 09, it just sort of collapsed, didn't it, um, after 09, because that that idea that you just don't worry about profits <laughs> because we could push that off. <laughs> oh, look at look at the look at the revenue. We're growing revenues 20% a year. No, don't no. look at profits. And you know, I thought that would have happened in 20 well, it would have happened last year, but it hasn't. That that mentality's still hanging in there, isn't it? Which is strange. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> um yeah, again, historical analogs. Uh, so what you're looking at here on the on the um, left hand side, um, yeah, they're just drawing analogies to 1987 because you've you've had that um, <clears throat> you, you've had that 
spike in in yields, which which has reversed in the last couple of days a little bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. I think the the entire move of October had been reversed in a day or something. Uh, but it is an interesting analog. Um, yeah. That I'm I'm I'm, I'm not predicting a 20, 23% crash in one day. And I think the, um, what are they, the, you know, the, the, they, they hold the market anyway. Yeah, yeah. Just down 10, 10%. It's a lot officially controlled now. Oh, you only let have yeah. 15% crash in a day now. Which is, crap. which is, which is bullshit. Like just let it go. It creates opportunity. You know, but, you sit but there. But it just fear panic. for the next day. Imagine what the open, if you do stop it at 15% or whatever it is, I don't know the number. If you stop yeah. it, What's the open going to be like? The open's going to be absolutely, it doesn't matter what, if you, if things have improved, yeah. is this going to be automatic carnage? It's just. Oh, yeah. No. I don't, I don't, I don't see why they have to interfere with it. Just let it go. I don't care for, you know, you, I mean, it, it's, it's those cases where, you know, you've got a stock that's a dollar and people start panic selling and you throw in a bid for 20 cents and you might pick it up. That's good. That's a good thing. Yeah. You know, you've been waiting around um, for five years and then all of a sudden, you, you won chance yeah. in five years, you know, that's yeah. it. I think, I think I told the story before in 2008, I put in a bid for this stock, you know, well below where the market was because there were no bids. There was only sellers and, and Combank told me that I wasn't allowed to put the bid in because it was too far away from the market price. Like, fuck off. Is, you know, <laughs> no such thing as a free market, Tim. No, no, no. no. I like to control <clears> it. <throat> yeah, no. It, do you remember 1987? Do you remember that day? I, I was I can, nine. I can I remember the, <laughs> yeah, I was 13. Um, I remember it on the news. That's about all. And I probably didn't understand it. <laughs> no, I, I obviously I'd didn't say. understand it. I just remember the panic and, you know, just yeah. everything was engulfed. You know, it was pretty bad. i um, trying to ask my old yeah. man what was going on and, you know, he can't really explain it to me, you know, that the terms that I could understand, you know, but. Well, you, back then, see, my parents didn't own any stocks. Um and you know, compulsory super wasn't across the board mm. at all in '87. So my parents just sort of shrugged their shoulders. Went, eh, doesn't affect us, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, oh. I think it wasn't until they came out with those share packs, you know, where they bundled up like uh-huh. Combank and all that BHP. That's when my parents started buying some shares. But yeah, it did, didn't really make uh, news in our house, really. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, I seek employment data. Um, we've been showing this for a while, so this is to the end. Of, this is to October. Job ads coming down, mm-hmm. applications per job going up. That's going to cross at some point. And, of course, we're just funneling in students, uh, and some of those are fake students because what they do is they use student visas to come over here and they go get a job. So, you know, that's just, yeah, it's it's – we are running headlong into a problem that's easily identifiable and yet, you know, uh, mm. nothing, nothing's been done about it. Uh, interesting, whatever happens this weekend with the referendum, um, you know, if, if Albanese, even if they were to pull off a miraculous yes, um, these other problems are going to be hanging around for a while. Unemployment yep. is going up. Um, stress, mortgage stress is going to be still be there. Um, inflation is well. It looks like it's under control. The RBA hopes the RBA is just looks from their latest commentary. You, it just looks like they're hoping, they're just oh. hanging on, right? Because they don't want to raise rates. They absolutely don't. Well, CBA brought out that thing. They said, you know, they're probably going to have to lift sometime this year. A lift, you know, yeah. So, yeah. because they're worried that you know that two to three percent range isn't gonna isn't possible if you get 0.9 in a quarter so boy yeah. that would and then you've everyone feels good now because everyone's got a job so you know most people got a job so if that you know you're lifting and then <laughs> unemployment ticks up like crikey that's just gonna really put a dampener on christmas so we'll see yeah, <laughs> yeah. uh well um anyway that's enough of the macro stuff this week we're going to have a look at chemo metech. Yeah, chemo metech. This one's in. Yeah, is a, a Danish company and it's down fifty one percent year to date. So it's Ooh. been sold off a little bit. Medical supplies company that I think most people can understand it. You know, with a little bit of research. And uh, what caught my attention was the fundamentals. And clearly, they show that there's a mode. The mode is basically caused by the FDA. 
they produce cell counters um, that have consumables and they're used by a large number of life science companies. For example, they can count dead and living cells in a sample um, to a much higher accuracy than our other companies. And you need this when yeah. you're creating a drug or some cell therapy to make sure that, you know, there's no DNA left over or certain live cells or there is a certain concentration of live cells. So the FDA makes this part of their process when they're producing or testing products. And so if you want to change to another provider, you've got to then inform the FDA and put a proposal towards them and show why you're changing it and which is near impossible to do. No one does it. And then no. you have on the other side, you have the FDA recommending your products to life sciences companies because they want to you know, decrease risk and increase outcomes. So you've got like a sales force employed by the government, you know, <laughs> pump it, pumping your product. So you can understand <laughs> why we've got metrics like the below. Shares extending, stable for many years, employees slow growth and about half of revenue revenue growth. PE and price to free cash flow is still expensive, but they've never been this cheap for years. Return on invested capital and margins are insanely high and they're improving and stable over many years. The rev revenue growth and EPS growth are exceptional, even at the 10 year mm. mark. So they've been doing this for a long time. Um, got a small dividend, but a large payout ratio, which is a bit of a concern. They have heaps of cash on hand as seen by the interest coverage ratio. Um, if we flip over to the balance sheet and cash flow, we can see they've got, um, you know, no long-term debt and a heap of cash. Yeah. On the cash mm -hmm. flow, you know, it's down about 13% operational cash flow, but, you know, it's a 15x increase in seven years. You know, this is mm -hmm. insane. Cell research and DNA pharmaceuticals are definitely, you know, got some, you know, tailwinds with them. The FDA, the FDA is locking in their product line, so it's hard to see someone disrupting this company in the short term. So, you know, the reason why I like these companies is it's like you're investing in pharma, but without all the discovery and expense of, you know, finding yeah, yeah. drugs and patents. The bear case yeah. is this is still expensive and the FDA may switch horses at some stage. I personally like more natural competitive advantage that don't rely on government support, but this one's a mix. And at a yeah. decent risk-adjusted price, I'll definitely add it to the portfolio. Um, is definitely superior to an average S and P five hundred company. What what is? Do you know why it's come off fifty percent? I'm not sure exactly. I think because of the free cash flow has gone down a little bit. So if you look at this operational free cash flow, you can see, you know, in 2022 it was about 176 yep. million. Now it's gone down to 154. So did earning did earnings go down in that year as well? in the year to June? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't look at the earnings, but just look at cash flow. But yeah, yeah. So yeah. it obviously has taken a bit of a hammering, um, but it's still expensive as hell. But but if you look yep. at these EPS numbers, look at the three-year EPS number. Like obviously, like four. Yeah. If you just compare that revenue number, just the three-year numbers, um, like that's like more than twice Microsoft. You know? Yeah. And you look at the event, you can just see why this trades at a high multiple. Like it's got huge yeah. amounts of growth. And well, like you said, um, it's never been cheaper, has it? No. I mean, well, not in the last six or seven not years. In the last, yeah. It probably has at, t at a, you know, a quarter or so, but averaged over each year. Um, but, you know, like if you take off another 30% on this and you're in the 20s for a PE or a, you know, um, yeah. Price to free cash flow, crikey! Like, what else are you looking for? You know, um, it's just the moat. You know, will this yep. continue for the next ten years? This is a hard thing. You know, um, yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to have more cell pharmaceuticals and DNA type drugs and things like that going forward. Treatments. Um, I can't yep. see that slowing down because it's more personalized. Um, yeah, they're sort of running out of drug 
discovery type stuff. So I think it's definitely got legs. It's just, and it's got all the things that I love, all this disposable cartridge stuff that they've got to buy, <laughs> you know, the consumable. Yep. You're not just selling them a machine and then every five or 10 years they upgrade. You're selling all. It's like selling them a printer. Yep. It's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and charge, I mean, that, that's where they make all their money. They charge you 70 bucks for a bloody <laughs> printer cartridge. Uh, yeah. So then yeah. you've got the FDA picking as your sales team. Like these guys have already got like, what, 170 people on the team. Yeah. Well, got... look, look at the difference between the gross margin and then the operating margin. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've got 58, 58% gross, but 40, 47 operating. I mean, there's not much. It's pretty, it's pretty light, isn't it? Oh, yeah. You've got 170 people working there. You've got the FDA working for you. Um, yeah. Yeah, it seems to be a pretty ideal setup. And obviously, they'll just stick to their little area because, you know, just as long as they don't do acquisitions and start, you know, oh, you know, thinking they're big people and yeah. start buying up a whole heap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing all that sort of stuff. That That's a risk as well. Um, but yeah, it's one of these ones, you know, if it gets sold off, um. Yeah, why not? Like, I think. Yeah. Well, it has been sold off. That's yeah, yeah, I know. But <laughs> like, look at those crazy numbers. But back in the past, you know, it's 166 yeah. for a PE. You know, 80s. You know, and like. Yeah, that was 2021. Yeah, so that's an aberration. But even going back to 2017, you got 67 and 51, 58. Yeah. Shit. You yeah. have to be a brave man to be putting that into your pool. But I know people do it and. Obviously, a heap of people have, and they've done really well out of it. But, um, yeah. But I mean, compared to some of the things that you've brought, this is doesn't look as expensive as some of the others we've looked at in the last, yeah, yeah, three to six months. Do you think, like, in a similar area, like they're not, they've got the growth to justify it, notwithstanding the last twelve months. Mm. Not really sure what happened there, but uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's, it's just, you know, you told me to focus on quality and, you know, I'm just like ignoring the valuation. <laughs> I used to be just totally patching falling knives and I found, you know, that doesn't work. And yeah. if you just start looking at quality yeah. and go, well, I've just got to wait for my time and wait for an opportunity. As long as the moat is still intact, I'm, you know, I'll be happy to own this and sit on it. And yeah. it's been going since 1977. I think it's got a few more years left in it. Um, and no more. Yeah. Way less risky than pharmaceuticals, so that's yeah. why I like it. Um, yeah, yep. Yeah. Alrighty, all right. Uh, Tim has brought the goods again. People, have a look at that one. C H E M M, and that's listed on. Um, where's it listed? Is it listed? Oh, Euro Next. You know, like it's all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Euro company. So that's another good thing. It's sort of hidden over there a little bit, but um, yeah, yeah. You don't have to look in the US. You know, some of these other places, uh, yeah, yep. have some quality as well. So, yeah. Yep. Well, there you go, people. Uh, that's it for this week, and we will see you next time.